but empty plastic, nothing important there. One thing I'll notice is that the bottom, you know, not counting the issue that I'm likely having, uh, there's a button right here at the bottom of the blower, which the ba bottom plastic part hits, and it hit connects, and it's like a safety switch. I honestly was sort of hoping that was the case, because then I could just bypass this switch. But not my problem, but maybe something to be aware of. If you lost the plastic part or the plastic nub broke off, it could just be a safety switch if yours isn't working. Mine is an electrical arc. Whoa, yeah, okay. Well, there's your problem. One of the brushes has come out entirely. Okay, here, let me see if I can show you real quick. I can still smell the ocean. I ran this just not that long ago. But uh, here, uh, I'll show it. <coughs> I'll zoom in later. Okay, here's a brush holder. This is the brush. This should be inside that. <coughs> Let me zoom up close. It smells pretty bad. Let me try. Try to get it in the camera. Okay, almost there. Okay, so this brass copper looking thing should hold the bushing. I mean the bushing, not the contact. Here, this is the contact right here. It has come out of place. So this is what's arcing tremendously. I'm gonna try to put this back in, in there and see if we fix it. Really amazed that that actually came out. I'm gonna see if I can pull out the moat entirely. Look at the other side. Yeah, here if you see the other side, that's what it should look like. It's got a connector. Try to zoom in on it again. Okay, so right here, you can see the brass. Inside there is the contactor. I feel like bad because I don't remember the proper name. So that what contacts the actual motor right here, like between the brass and this is this contactor, a brush. And then this is a spring that's pushing that brush to contact this surface here. And uh, then there's this wire that's coming up from here to the contactor. It's being pressured by the spring to touch this shaft. And that is what is not happening on the other side. On the other side we have the housing and the brush and uh, it got popped out somehow. I mean, it's worn, but it's still got life in it. Okay, I don't know what it's going to take to put that thing back in, but we're going to try to see what we can do. Okay, well, now I'm to the point where I got the the brush back into its sleeve. Trying to get the spring back into the slot. Okay, spring back into the slot. The problem I foresee is that this is going to want to twist right out, this brush holder. Okay, so it's back together. And that the brush is being held by the brush holder, which is, has contact with the spring and the connector. But I can tell that this brush holder right here wants to wiggle back and forth. And as soon as it starts rolling again, it's just going to tear free. 
else? What could we do to fix that? You know, the very first thing that's coming to mind? Zip ties. <sighs> Zip tie. The, the circuit board type material or plastic that it's printed on is pretty weak. Of course, I always love PL Premium. That'd be really good too. But I'm going to try to type first. Yeah, I think I'm going to do, I'm going to put some PL Premium on the side of this and maybe even on the back of it just to hold that brass connector in place. The zip tie here is helping out. But I don't feel like it'll be, I mean, I may still leave it in there, but I mean, it's not, it's not great. But you can see now we have the, if you can make that out, you get the black. Uh, all my videos have such terrible lighting and views. Thank you for watching them. <laughs> okay, so you got the black connector connected with the shaft to the electric motor held by this copper thing. And then that way, while it spins, here I'll show. maintains contact. Okay. Right. Now for funds, I'm gonna put this together. We'll see if it works as is. I think this goes without saying that it is not as safe. To, of course operate a electric blower when it is completely exposed. Okay let's see though if our little contact with the zip tie thing was able to bring this back to life. Oh come on, no? I'm surprised. I thought we had it there. Oh wait, hang on a second. Turn it back to off. And the power turned off. Okay. I mean, electric machines are simple. Let's give it a try. Ah, woo! Yeah, it's alive. It's alive. It's alive. Okay, that's it. That's it for that. Okay. Okay. I'm going to. We've fixed the. Okay, don't do that. Don't do that, okay? Okay, so to finish this off, like I said, is I am going to put in some PL Premium or some other epoxy in to hold this connector commuter into place. And once that is done, this will be ready to be put back into service for who knows, who knows how long. The contactors have only used up about a quarter of their life, I'd say. Maybe a half, half of their life. Just because things are old don't mean they still don't work. Okay, well I hope. I mean, this is pretty easy. All I have to do is glue it and put the screws back on it. And uh, doesn't else, I hope you found it interesting. This is what the inside of your leaf blower looks like. It's really simple. It is just one motor and a power switch to turn it on and off. It's a secondary switch to keep you from doing it by accident or doing it like I did with the shroud off. And uh, that's that. Hope it helps. Here you've got that brass copper looking holder, which is holding the carbon rod contactor or brush, which is touching that center shaft. You can see that little wire 
there by the spring the wire is going to the carbon rod that is putting electricity through it. Okay, we'll call that a win.